All right, we're back. Crap out of my thumb. All right, so that thrust washer shows evidence of screwing, which means the crank is thrusting to the left really heavily. Belt drives if you go that direction, so it's the opposite direction it would be. This surface here looks pretty good. You can see what's bumped up against it, but not too much wear issues. Got a little hot spot down here, so there's a little wear. Yeah, it's getting hot. Swapping color out right there. So I'm showing evidence going the other way too. And you get the light just right, you can see the gall marks right here. See that's a little torn metal right there. It's not smooth. See it's smooth down here in the bottom, but that's torn up metal right there. A little bit on the top over there, definitely torn up right here. Pretty rough. And this one over here. This one, the whole thing is evenly rough, so it's not gold anywhere. It wouldn't stick into it, but it's definitely chewing it up. This one here is trying to stick a little bit. And the left wash, left thrust washer looks worse. So the case race looks better. Damn, still got something like that. All right, so these here are going to have to get out of here somehow. The only way we can do it is kind of a chisel action going on there, which I don't like doing. But they got to come off. So you get a chisel with a real sharp edge on it and try to get them out. So if you go opposite where the dowel is, it'll be easier. The dowel's right here in the bottom, so I'm going 180 over here, coming right from this surface. I popped it once, it can't got a gap, and then I was able to drop this down like that, so I can just push behind it. So I got it out. So you can see how the heat transfer on this side here. But you can see all the wear marks on this side. That was on the good one. This is the one that's worse. Look at the heat transfer on this side. Heavily heat transferred. It's definitely burning up pretty good there. You can see that. So definitely not the best. So this motor has no miles on it. So if I had to guess, I'd guess it was uh it was definitely probably under a couple hundred. From what I see. Get the metal out of my thumb again. It's a pocketizer for. So, all right, so we got that out. Let's go ahead and split these apart. See how worse, how bad it gets. is too small. That's a 3-ace. 3-16s. I think that's what they use in the early ones. Smaller. That's probably what it is. Okay, let's get the crank apart first. I don't know if this has been apart or this is how it was. Uh, that was half too tight. This one's definitely tight on this side. Said Loctite on it. You can see all the residue down there from the Loctite. You can smell it too. It's red in color, so it's red. This one here didn't have it on there as much, so I think it's been apart already. I'm expecting not to have a bunch of 
broken cage parts in here. You can definitely see I was all eaten up though. Cracks are way gone. Yeah, he's had this apart because all the parts are gone. All this shrapnel would have been everywhere. Yeah, that thing's big time gone. That's a replaceable washer that needs to be replaced. Rods are junk. Whenever I see hit marks on the outside like this, they're garbage. These things can have cracks through here, you don't see it. I've seen them where they split, they come right back apart and break up. So whenever I see marks on the outside of the rod, I don't use them. And you can see the plane where the marks are in there from beating on stuff. Right there is beating the hell out of the crank, so this sets junk. I wouldn't use it. Not recommended. You can send them out have them all x-rayed and <clears throat> whatever other mag particle testing, which is just magna magnetite that's throwing, <clears throat> throwing a cast iron grit on it, steel grit, but it's a fancy name for the same thing. It ain't worth the trouble. Go buy some new rods or get some old stock Harley ones and use those. So that's pretty torn up. Pretty small holes for lightning. Balancing. Now you can use a steel hammer to pop the crank pin, but hit it flat. If you don't hit it flat, it screws up the thread. We want to keep that key, we need that. So you take your channel locks, your channel locks, your dikes. Grab a hold of it and just lift up on it like that. Leverage it up and you get the key out. That we need, this is junk. <clears throat> yep. Any Loctite on those. Yeah, a little bit of residue in there, not much. We're getting kind of skimpy on the Loctite on these. These were tight, they were put together. Yeah, those are tight, I don't want to keep banging them like that. Screws up the ends of the shafts. So these we'll go put the press and press them out. All right. Take the camera with us on one of these. So I'm take this over here in the press. Now oh, I got this thing weighed down right now. All right. So flat bottom more or less looks like. right there on that to push on. I need a bunch of blocks because the press is way low right now. So I'll just stack a few of these up in here. Like that. That way when they pop off it'll make a big mess. Okay we got an arm over here. It's right there. Let's see how much tonnage we take. Okay this is gonna come out and hit down there pretty hard. Normally I have a bunch of stuff down here to protect the shaft, but let's see what happens here. Came out pretty hard. I didn't see what the pressure was. It wasn't much, probably about three tons. Okay, tapers don't look too bad. You can see the chatter marks when they cut them. We're done with the reamer, it looks like. Reamers, though, is what everybody thinks are good, but they leave chowder marks like crazy. Cutting them is better. Cutting costs more money. Tapered reamers are easier to come by. And they all work. Alright, here's the other one. 
Same deal. Stack everything all up. Okay, on high pressure side. Okay, let's put this on what we need for making some serious pressure. Let's see what the needle pops out. About two tons. That one didn't blow out because the key held it in. Oops. Shafts down here somewhere. Yep. Looks fine. So this one needs to be tapped out past the key. Take the ball pin, just lightly hit it. Sometimes works. Key looks fine, tight. It's got a lot of wear on that shaft. You see the amount of pressure right in here only, right on this side. And over here, see there's no pressure at all anywhere. The real heavy pressure right here, but no, almost not much pressure out here. You see how shiny it is right there? It's a lot of pressure right there. The shaft's going to come apart right there from being worn heavily. But you can't feel it wherever you can see it. So you, you know the pressure's been applied. More evidence that a crank is not exactly 100% true. This one has two rows of bearings right here. Same thing, you can see the inner one here is really, really tight. And the outer one out here has barely got anything on it. This one here's got a lot of heat on it. See, it's all kind of blue. That's a lot of heat transfer, but the rollers didn't look like they were heated. Rollers look fine. This one's just a hint darker than this one, but you don't really see any color in them. You can tell it's getting hot because you can see it on the shaft. That's all that binding that was going on. Okay, make sure all the keys are out. So has a key in it, so just take a screwdriver and tap it out of there. Oop, fell out. Alright. Shoot up pretty good. This one's a lot heavier. Now the washer ends right along this edge right here. This is flywheel damage here, that's permanent. See the washers right here, see? So, you got about 90 hours or so here. Flywheel. So, about the edge of my finger, the washer there is out. So, all this other damage is in here. It's not too bad, so it's not feasible. It's actually deeper on this side. The washers definitely have to be replaced. All right, so I don't know what stroke these are. They look like they're a little stroked out, a little like a little long to me. I'm guessing 80 inch crank. Uh, let's find out. Let's see what we got. So center taper to center taper is your stroke multiplied by two. Two and an eighth, four and a quarter, 80 inch stroke. There's a bunch of numbers over here. Very hard to read, but that's a quarter. Let me put a big four in there, you can see it. Four and a quarter. I don't know what 39 means, but four and a quarter is a stroke. You can hardly even see the quarter in there, it's so small. I think they'd be proud of it. You can see how something right here, right in case these flyers digging on the table. Something down here is digging the table pretty hard. Piece of metal in there. Same thing, it's hard to read. 39, four and a quarter. 
All right, so this has an 80 inch crank in it. So that means you need a stroker piston. Wonderful. When do we get stroker pistons out? So whose pistons are these? FT 36.5A2. So I know who makes these pistons. They're stroker. You can also tell how close the wrist pin is to the edge here. That's definitely an indicator being a stroker piston, too. So I don't know who makes a casted stroker piston. No 74 inside. SNS have to even make them anymore. These things would cost you 500 bucks. <laughs> So I guess if old Taiwan Teddy is making a cast and stroker piston or not. Or maybe True and Osborne had something cast himself. Doubtful, but don't know. These are stroker pistons. Alright, more fun stuff to figure out. Alright, well, there you go. Low mileage motor. Got a lot of issues. My guess is that the heads need to be taken apart and look at the heads, but. They're basically on a separate oil system because they're up high by themselves, so they're probably okay, but they need to be checked out. Other than that, everything else, had a lot of debris through it. I'm going to deal with it. All right, repot motor, not the best. <laughs>